Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of June 20th. I am just praying that June slows down, summer <laughs> slows down. Let's slow this whole thing down here in the studio this week with me. It's really awesome. We've got Jamie and Alan and Alex from the team. Hi guys. Hey, hey everyone. Hey. Great to have you around the circle. And I'm gonna tell you why they are here in a moment. But to kind of summarize where we've been, if you've been tracking with us recently, you've been hearing three weeks of the audio book. Uh, Resilient. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that? <laughs> okay. Yes. Three weeks of me reading the audiobook version of Resilient. And then prior to that, if you've been tracking with us through the spring, we've kind of been meandering through themes around the Hour of the Ten Bridesmaids, the importance of caring for our oil and our love and intimacy with Jesus, our reserves. Frankly, this just isn't a time to go spend every last nickel you have remaining from the pandemic, emotionally, spiritually, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So today I invited Jamie and Alan and Alex in because I just wanted to kind of check in and have a conversation about reserves, about what you're observing in the world, what you're observing in yourselves, the effects that you can notice about all this. But I wanted to start with what is going on in these airline incidents where <laughs> they're like turning planes around in the air mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. landing back at their departure place and people are getting arrested. Whoa. Like, wow. Yeah. 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 This isn't humanity behaving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like. Yeah. 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 Other place I'm seeing is on the highways. And it feels like a Mad Max movie. Like every time I get on the highway, <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to just start ramming into other people because you could just feel the tension out there. And people yes. people are cutting me off and the highways feel Sorry, Alex. Dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> think, noticed you this morning. I think Stacy mentioned it on an earlier podcast, but we were chatting with our FedEx delivery woman. And she was saying she had seen two fatal accidents in the last month Oof. out of rudeness. Wow. It was people who wouldn't allow someone to merge. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Like it wasn't yeah. like hardcore, yeah. you know, somebody's yeah, going 120 on the right. freeway or something like that. It, it was just hostility. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on with mm -hmm. humanity mm -hmm. and are those, in fact, signs of the very things we've been talking about? Right. My family experienced a um, airline incident back in February. What? Where it's that thing of you could you could look at what was happening and say, "Gosh, what a jerk!" Like that that woman was just a jerk. Or you could pause and go, "She is really unwell, and so unwell that she is." acting out publicly so that everybody knows it. Had some great conversation with my kids on that. Like we were just witnessing the unwellness of wow. humanity in this one woman who did end up, end up getting removed from the plane right before we took off. Oh, wow. Um, but it was incredible to like, as someone who just thinks I could never do that, yet you're witnessing that happening, it, it just, there was something deeper going on. Right, was, because people know now that it's being filmed. Right. Yeah. Right? right, like these mm -hmm. aren't the first couple incidents. Like mm -hmm. this is now a year into this. So by the way, little data, prior to the pandemic, the number of incidents on airlines, unruly passenger incidents, were, was 10 a month which I think is pretty impressive for a global yeah. airline industry, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, there's a lot of flights yeah. every day. There's a lot day, of right? flights. Yeah. Okay, so you're like, oh, okay, 10 a month, right? 500 a month What in 2021. Wow. And 2021 <laughs> had reduced number of flights and reduced number of people flying. Right. So yeah. it's not even like a fair comparison. So it's more, you know, oh, it's, it's more than like 50 times, you know, yeah. it's probably like 100 times mm -hmm. the number of incidents 
And so far in this year, that I think there's been like 350. But we're only in, you know, six months into the year. You're like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone knows now, you're a passenger, you know, it's being filmed. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you're going to get arrested. You're going to get kicked off this flight. Something's going to happen. And yet, people cannot seem to constrain themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. right? The, mm -hmm. the, the reserves, mm -hmm. right? The margin, kind of the, the, right. the extra that people need to right. behave themselves in frustrating <laughs> circumstances, right? And then I like confession, me too. Mm. Like not on airlines, but I just have noticed, I used to have a little something for irritating people. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I can be gracious to that guy <laughs> that just cut me off, uh -huh. you know, on the freeway or, or this gal who's, you know, taking forever in the line at the grocery store and, you know, she's gone into the 15 item line with 30 items. You know, I'm like, okay, okay. I, I got nothing now. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed. And actually I'm, I'm actually a little troubled by, I am having really quick reactions yeah. to highly irritating people. <laughs> 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 Which is why I've asked you guys to come into the studio today. <laughs> Are you seeing this? Like, what what are you observing in your worlds? If you just kind of think about your your everyday life, your your neighborhood, your relational worlds, what yeah. are, what are you observing? How are people doing? So recently, we had Memorial Day weekend, and you know that's usually kind of the first little inklings of summers mm -hmm. here. Yeah. People are excited to get outside, and I had a dear friend that organized a get together at a park and actually Jamie you you and your family yeah. came to that and I don't know if you noticed this Jamie but what I was really struck by is normally those are like you know you get a a group of people who somewhat know each other and you know the kids were having fun and they were playing but what I noticed of the adults in that situation is normally you'd have like these great conversations going on and people interacting a ton through the whole time. But what I noticed was there would be a little short conversation and then people would go sit down by themselves. Wow. And sit for a little bit. And then they might engage a little conversation again and then they go sit down and isolate for a little bit. <laughs> and I was doing it. I was finding in myself, oh, I don't have that gear of intense conversation and excitement to be around people. I, I can't do what I mm -hmm. had done before. And it was fascinating because I'm a little bit introverted that way and and would think that was just me. But to look around and see a whole group of people that were doing the same thing. On a holiday. On a yeah. holiday. Yeah. You know, beautiful day, sunny skies out at the park with their friends and mm -hmm. you could just see people were managing their social capacity in that situation. Something similar, but even a little bit more personal, my husband and I's anniversary was over Memorial Day and uh, he, we were sitting Happy down. Happy anniversary. Thank yeah. you. Sorry we missed that. <laughs> um, we we're sitting down having coffee one morning and he, he just out of the blue says, like, how do you think we're doing? And my first reaction was, I want to go get back in bed. I do not have the capacity to talk about our relationship right now. And he did it like <laughs> in a loving way. Like mm. he really wants to know wow. how are we? Are we, I think we're okay, but do you think we're okay? And I just like my first instinct was to shut down because I just didn't have it in me to have a discussion about our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so I don't know that there was any time of day where he could have asked that, that I would have been open and available. It was just like, mm. That, mm. that seems like too hard right now. And we are doing great. We have a fantastic marriage. I, like there was, there's no issue that I was trying to skirt around and not have to talk about. It was just the offer to discuss a topic that was, you know, big and important. I'd had no bandwidth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
please don't ask me to rise to this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and so Kelly and I were out just running errands last weekend looking for some joy. She really wanted flowers. Mm-hmm. So we were shopping for flowers for the summer. We were at, you know, kind of a, a Lowe's Home Depot type store getting a flag and some things. And what I found rising up in me was it was everything I had to muster to have a day full of activity, but I knew we were going to places of joy. But when I was there, nobody seemed to be very happy at those places. Mm -hmm. And I actually found myself getting irritated. And what I realized was I wanted everything to be good again around me. I wanted to come into places and atmospheres where there was joy and people were just normal and everything was good. And they were struggling like me. And so Kelly and I would leave a place and go, what was going on there? Everybody, like, we're at a flower shop, but nobody's happy. And Mm -hmm. now we're at a hardware store and everybody seems irritated. And it was just this microcosm of, I think everybody's doing what they can just to show up. Mm -hmm. But when you're around a lot of people who just barely can show up, (laughs) it's not a very joyful place because everybody's on empty. Everybody's just doing the best they can, but the cumulative effect is flat and joyless. So it just, I think it aggravates the situation. Yeah, Mm -hmm. right. We are recording this the week after Memorial Day because it's where it fits into our our schedule to be able to do that. And a guy was admitting to me yesterday, he said, oh man, I was so glad there were no invitations to barbecues for our family (laughs) on Memorial Day. Like he was relieved not to be invited to anything. I thought, wow, isn't that fat? Because this is a very sociable person who was Mm. saying this. Super extrovert, very funny, outgoing kind of guy, life of the party kind of guy. And he's admitting, thank God we didn't have to go to anything. Yeah. So what we've been talking about here in the podcast over the last many months is now what I would call the cascade effects. You know, you know, like, yeah, the pandemic, you know, for the most part's behind us. Uh, there were a lot of flights canceled over Memorial Day because of airline staff that couldn't show up because of COVID. But for the most part, people have it in their rear view mirror. Like it's mm-hmm. done, it's gone. Let's not even talk about it anymore, please. Let's just get back to the beach. Let's get back to tacos, you know, kind of thing. (laughs) Okay. But there is a cascade effect. It's like anything else in life. You know, you go through an automobile accident, you rally for the moment and for the things that need to happen, the police report or whatever, but then you go home and you're a mess, right? Mm -hmm. Your body hurts. You start realizing weeks later that your neck is not doing great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's the cascade effects of trauma. There's the cascade effects of just high stress months and months of living. And what you guys are describing, I'm so grateful to have you in here today because the world is back to normal life. We're back to people at the park and, you know, airline flights and all that. We're at restaurants and concerts and and all that, but we're showing back up to a life that's asking us to be 100% yeah, without 100%. Yeah. Hmm. Are you seeing that? Is that what it feels like? Yeah. Yeah. um, So uh, Zoe, my daughter, graduated from high school. Yes. um, Just a couple of weeks ago. And how do you feel about that? Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. (laughs) Let's not talk about it Um, (laughs) because I might lose it. at the end of the summer will be the really hard part when we drop her off at college. But no, it's been like, you know, it was exciting and I was excited and excited for her. And, and we did a, we did a party, um, for her graduation and, um, and had quite a few people that showed up and I, and I spent a good four or five hours talking straight, like just, Mm -hmm person after person after person. And And can we say good for you, Alex? Wow. Me, right? Way to go, (laughs) buddy. And I was so fried. And I did notice within myself, like I literally had no reserves. It, It feels like you're out trying to do a marathon and you're in those last 
couple of miles where you literally there there are no more matches to burn. That's what I feel like is I don't have that extra bit yes. to give yes. anymore. And the next day, Mel and her sister and my nephew were there at our house and they needed some relief from the day before's festivities. And so they're like, let's go to a movie. And I was like, I do not want to go to a movie. So they ended up going to the movie and I was like, guys, I'm staying home. Mm-hmm. And you would think a movie, yeah, of course, like you get to sit in a seat and just watch a movie and and that should be relaxing. But to me, it was like, no, I cannot enter back into humanity once <laughs> more. And that requires you drive to the theater and you interact with the people at the counter and you sit next to some stranger and like that I did not have capacity mm-hmm. for anymore. And and that's what it feels like the state of yes. the world is. Yes. What else are you guys observing in yourselves of the cascade effect and of depleted reserves? Well, for me, I notice when my phone rings or I get a text and I haven't read the text, but I just see that I have a text coming in. My initial reaction isn't, wow, like, I wonder what cool thing they're about to tell me. It's, oh, crap. Like, what? <laughs> something has come up right. uh-huh. and Red. it's going to require something of me that yeah. I don't have time for or energy for. And most of the time, it's a really fun text. It's just somebody saying, hey, I read this book. I thought you'd like it. Or, hey, do you want to go to dinner tonight? But that's not my initial internal reaction. My internal state is tension, uh, a kind of a, even sometimes going, I'm not going to even look at that text for 30 minutes until I feel like I'm ready for it. And there's no reason, like no trauma is happening in in that moment in my life, but it's just a built in automatic response that I think reflects my overall lack of reserve and state of being is I can't handle one more thing right Mm -hmm. now. Yes, I can relate to that. And where I find myself going is putting things off. Like when something will come up within me that I know that I should work on or that I should give some attention to, I, I don't have the capacity to do that right now. So yeah, I, I do need to work on that or I do need to make a plan for that. I'm going to maybe do that next week, next month. Like yep. this could be like things in a relationship that need to be attended to or just a to-do list. But I don't find myself with a lot of space to attend to things that would make me well mm. or m- more whole or more, I don't know what the right word is, but I don't have it in me to do it now. So maybe sometime I will which just kind of perpetuates the problem, uh, I think, in some respects. Yeah, you're building your to-do list down the road. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, mortgaging the future is what Stace and I call it. She, she keeps reminding me, everything's possible in three months. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to bed at like eight. <laughs> and I'm just yeah. going to admit that on the podcast. Oh, it's Stacey and I find ourselves going to bed earlier these days than we ever have. Mm. And I'm like, what's with that? There's some level. Mm. I get through my day. I show up. Yeah. I come through. I get through my day. But in the evening, there isn't that little bit left for the evening activities of, hey, let's go ride, it, ride our bikes or let's take a walk on or go to the park with the dogs. It's like, how long do I have to stay <laughs> up? <laughs> And we will literally tell each other, oh, babe, 8.15. We're getting to 8.15 tonight. Yeah. And we're trying to push it back out to where it used yes. to be. Anybody else? Yeah. That sounds like wisdom, man. Yeah. Like, I think we should all be going to bed at 8.15. We'd sounds probably like be better people. Yeah, maybe it is part of our prescription, but yeah. it's, it's just part of the reality. And the other thing I'm noticing in myself, Alex, you were talking about being with people for a long, sustained time. And then afterwards, just being spent, I've noticed that my recovery time 
yeah. is longer now. Yeah. So we have a cabin up in the mountains. It's in a very remote place. It, we have to shut it down all winter, turn the water off, all that kind of thing. So sometime late May, I go up, see what the mice have done, turn the water back on. And there's just, there's always damage. There's always something that needs to be fixed, you know, a broken window or something. It's a fun trip for me. It's like, oh, we're going to go back to the cabin and go up there. And I always do it by myself because Stacy doesn't want to come in to like the dead rats and stuff. <laughs> um, so I did last weekend and it was good to be out in the forest and to see the rivers. And, you know, it's a four hour drive and I love that. And my recovery time was like two days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From, from just what normally would have been kind of a fun outing. I, I'm just noticing, wow, John, like, yeah. And was that because you had a lot to do when you got there or just? No. Okay. No, there was yeah. actually less to do this year. Wow, good point. There was less to do this year, good news, yes. than there has been in years past. Mm. You know, things weren't as bad and the mice had not taken over and there were no rats in there. And so <laughs> it was good. But even still, yeah. like I do a normal week and then I added that right. on top. I was like, whoa, asking extra yes. of myself. Yep. I found that my recovery time was longer now. I'm noticing that about myself. Mm -hmm. And so what we're describing, friends, is the cascade effect of this life and of all we've been going through of the war in the world is real. And I know that everyone is just desperate to say, things are fine, mm -hmm. I'm good, don't ask me how I'm doing. But the cascade effects are real mm -hmm. and the depleted reserves are real. And that, that's what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago when I was reading chapter one from Resilient is that when you rally to anything, even if it's a wedding or the birth of a child or, or some, something really good, you get to an uh, overseas trip you still tap into your reserves to do that. You, you, you go deep in order to rally. But at some point, you got to pay attention to your reserves. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're urging people to dive into in the book Resilient. And 30 Days to Resilient is available in our One Minute Pause app. That's free on the App Store. I need to step back for our listeners for a moment and say, as you're listening to Jamie, as you're listening to Alan and Alex, you're listening to people who actually know how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. This is a group that practices soul care mm -hmm. on a real regular basis. And yet you're hearing the effects of the cascade of, of the trauma of the last two years and of depleted reserves. So. What are you guys doing for relief? What are you going to do this summer? What's your plan to be kind to yourself? Mm -hmm. What's your plan for recovery? John, I think that's a key word is be kind to mm -hmm. yourself. And so it's a, it's a bit of stepping back and going, what is kind mm -hmm. to me in this season and in and, and understanding that I don't have the kind of reserves I, I normally would, you know, after coming off of the crazy week of graduation stuff a couple weeks ago and then coming into Memorial Day weekend and just knowing that I didn't have a lot, um, you know, we, we got invited to a few different things. There was another graduation party same day as the barbecue that we were invited to. And, and so I, I said, Mel, I bless you to go to the graduation party if that's what you'd like to do. And, and I will meet you at the barbecue. Like I, I just knew like, I've got one thing in me yep. today, not two things yep. in me today. And it's just a recognition of part of it's me and how I'm wired. And part of it's the reality of, I don't have those reserves and can't rally to, to just another weekend of more, more, more. And so, so actually this last weekend was a little 
more sustainable and I was able to be at the barbecue and enjoy it. And it was funny because I was talking to a, a buddy who was there and and uh, he had gone to the same graduation party and then the so barbecue. he had doubled up. He had doubled up and I said, man, I couldn't do that. I just had to be kind and go, um, you know, I'll meet you at the barbecue. And he's like, oh, you're so smart. Like he, you could tell he was, he was feeling it as well. He was regretting. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Overspending. Yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah, we're right now as a team in the ministry in a really full season, very busy, and it will be until the end of June because of a lot of things around Resilient and the release, which they're all good things. But what I'm purposely trying to do when I look at summer is, okay, starting July 1, I want to keep my calendar, my schedule for the family and myself as free as it can be. So right now, normally I would be booking things for July and August. And if there was an open spot or, you know, space on the calendar, it'd be like, well, yeah, let's invite this couple out for a weekend or let's have dinner this night or let's do this. And we're purposely saying, let's keep it really wide open so that we can do one or two things. And we've got one trip planned this summer, not three, not five, not you know, a zillion little things going on, but one family trip. And that feels like what my soul needs because, John, you were talking about what do you do to keep your reserves full? Well, the reserve is the extra, right? Like I think of like, a, a you know, the vehicles that have two tanks. You've got the gas tank and then you've got the reserve tank and some big trucks. Well, my reserve tank is on empty and my gas tank is nearing empty, the main tank. And so for me, it's not only how do I fill the tank, but how do I start building reserves? And that's going to require a lot more downtime, slower pace. So that's what my kind of remedy or my prescription is, is slow down more than I think I need to, to build time just to do not much of anything other than replenish. You're talking about the tanks, and I'm remembering when I drove to the cabin this weekend, my truck will tell me, it's reporting my oil life. I'm getting yeah. a little oil life warning thing, <laughs> and it's like, replace your oil now. Replace your oil now. I keep getting, every time you turn the engine on, you get that, and I'm like, Jesus. I mean, it was almost triggering uh -huh. to me at a soul level. <laughs> And I, I can't tell you how happy I was to get all the way home and get to the oil, you know, the oil place a couple of days later. And all oh, right, I got my, <laughs> I got my oil changed. I'm good <laughs> again. I was being triggered by that at like a spiritual level. Right. Mm -hmm. Replace your oil now. <laughs> In May, incredibly busy season. I am generally a person who is able to structure my life and my days with a lot of space, taking care of the things that need to get taken care of, but then also having space for myself, for my body, for my family. But the end of May, it was the end of the school year for two kids with all the different activities, all of which are great, but it's a lot like the end of year recitals and field day. And so on the one hand, I'm grateful to get to participate in that kind of thing with my kid's life, but it does take some of my reserves to do that. And then moving from the end of the school year into the book launch uh, has just added a lot more to my to-do list for sure. But I I found myself pretty empty recently. And um, a few weeks ago, I was chatting to Tyler, my husband, literally asking him for advice. Like, I'm pretty empty. I feel pretty burned out right now. But like, there's a lot going on. It's not like I can just, you know, hit the escape button and <laughs> take some time off right now. Um, and my husband is an engineer. He's very pragmatic. And I was bringing this to him for like, I think in my head, looking for a list, like first do this and then do this. And, and you know, those things will get you through. And the first and only thing out of his mouth was, I think you just need to be kind to yourself. 
which was the last thing <laughs> I expected to hear out of his mouth <laughs> and not the direction that I was hoping for. I was, I just needed mm. like, like a, a list of things I could do to mm. help get me through this. But it, it landed somewhere in me of, yeah, that is like, can I be kind to myself from a place that's more empty than normal mm -hmm. and just say, I am running low. Can I treat myself kindly in so that? Jamie, what does that look like? Like when you say, can I treat myself kindly? Yeah. How do you, what do you do then? Well, so the next day I was chatting with Stacy and kind of telling her about the story and just admitting where I, where I was. And I, I remember telling her, I was like, I think I'm at about 40% of what I would want to be operating on. And she said, that's great. You're going to do an awesome job with that 40%. So there wasn't this like, well, here's how you need to get back up to a hundred. It was just admit where you are and say with my 40%, I'm going to do the best I can. And that might not be a hundred percent of that 40%. <laughs> so I, I, that helped me kind of put things in perspective of I'm not as well as I want to be. I still have to show up to the things that I need to show up to my job, my family, my kids, but what is the capacity that I can show up? And maybe that's saying no to some things. Mm -hmm. Um, mm rearranging my schedule with the things that I can to say, I, I just don't have the capacity to do this today. And that's okay. Cause there's always three months from now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so friends, the reason that we are talking about this today is we're guessing you all are probably feeling the same things or noticing some of the effects or observing it in your loved ones, feeling it in your world. And this isn't meant to be discouraging. It's really good to name it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to begin to say, whoa, I do need a higher level of kindness towards myself right now. Yeah, I do need to think about my summer and what God has for me by way of replenishing reserves and living well where I can. But the hope and the promise of the gospel is that you have God. Mm -hmm. We have God. Mm -hmm. Paul prays for us in Ephesians 3, and this particular prayer is really thematic through the book and through the 30 days experience. He says, I pray to the Father, the creator of all things in heaven and on earth, that out of his glorious riches or the riches of his glory, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inmost being. And I just love that because the difference between like gospel resilience is that it's not suck it up. It's not self-effort. It's not get your act together, people, mm -hmm. right? Be more disciplined. Mm -hmm. It is you have the living God as your friend and your ally and your source in this hour and learning to just get with him, get some quiet, let him strengthen you out of his resources. And many translations talk about it, his glorious unlimited resources mm -hmm. to replenish our reserves, to, to restore us and renew us. That's the kindness. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. That's why it's gospel, right? Good news. You have God. We have God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John, that scripture is so helpful to me. And it also orients me to, I think, kindness, not just to myself, but to everybody around me. Because what you realize on the plane is everybody is on empty. Everybody at the grocery store, everybody in traffic, everybody in my family uh, is is trying to find those reserves and muster through, not in, a, in their own strength, but just trying to get by um, 40% with Jamie, like you said. And, and so to me, that's really helpful 
and kind to think about what you said for myself, but also for those around me and just go, what does grace and mercy look like in these times when nobody has reserves? Mm -hmm. I do want to point this out that when we are less than our best, when we are not at 100%, the idea of going to God does not sound as attractive Mm -hmm. as going for another beer, yes. going yes. to go get tacos, just going to bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that. I know it personally. And so I know when I say, but we have God, there's that little bit of, uh, uh-huh. you know, now, now I got to go do that. Yeah. <laughs> but the difference is, you know, my drive to the cabin was a choice that depleted any movement towards God does not deplete. It always Mm -hmm. replenishes, you know, to turn on that worship song that you enjoy in the car, to take that quiet moment in the morning with your coffee and just say your prayers. Like those, those are big on returns. Mm -hmm. And I know gang, I know like the idea of what I really need this summer is God can feel like, oh, I got to go do one more thing now. Yes. But the truth is, as we do it, he is the fountain of life. He really is. And his presence is renewing. And his love is so kind. And, and to be replenished, as Paul prayed for us, is a real experience. And it's wonderful. So whatever else we're chasing this summer, it's worth chasing that. 